A part of this video was sponsored by Google Meet. Hey, I've got a riddle for you. What's cute, fuzzy, and doesn't live long enough to die of old age? Hamsters. I feel bad for them, but I think I might be able to make their lives better by building this awesome patent for a hamster vest I found on the internet. I'm somewhat of an inventor myself. Just earlier today, I made a custom power cable for my printer because I lost the proper one. First, I connected two alligator clips to the power pans. It's important to use different color wires so you can tell which wire is which from a glance. Then I found two forks and bent all but one prong on both. Next, I attached the other end of the alligator clips to the forks. Now all I need to do is plug the forks into the wall outlet behind my computer and the electricity will travel up through the fork, through the alligator clip, and into the printer. Oh, shit. William! Just gotta... It only took a few tries, but I was able to get the printer working. I am legally obligated to tell you that this outlet was installed specifically for this joke, and it's actually connected to two car batteries. Patent number 59016666, filed by Bryce Belisle in 97, patent granted in 99, pet display clothing. <sighs> you know, a patent is relatively expensive to file. I think, you know, several thousand to tens of thousands of dollars. It's art, there's legal fees. I mean, there's literally a, a filing attorney, there's a primary examiner, there's references to other patents. Like a lot of research goes in to filing a patent. To provide pet display clothing, having one or more at least partially transparent enclosed pet receiving passageways or tunnels extending across surface thereof so that pets traversing the passageways or tunnel can be viewed by a spectator while the clothing is worn by a person. This hamster vest was designed by an exhibitionist. Circular animal admitting ports. Hemicylindrical. Pet barring closure plugs. It's a freaking hamster vest. We break it down, it's pretty simple too. There's just two shoulder tubes that kind of split off and do a Y towards his nipples. And then on his waist are pouches for, I guess, food and, and poop. But you, <laughs> you know how gerbils work. They're just gonna poop everywhere. You can't. Uh, at the surface, this seems kind of stupid, but maybe, maybe there's something really good in here. There's no need to reinvent the wheel, so I bought $200 worth of hamster tubes and started pouring them out all over my favorite table. I filmed a few different angles and edited the footage to make pouring last longer, trick you into thinking I've got an insane amount of hamster tubes. Uh, but this is what $200 gets you. They're expensive, which is crazy considering the actual hamster cost around $20. Except for this crap hamster. I should be able to build the hamster vest out of these tubes without doing much work. They clip together with this plastic ring and swivel corners to make more complex angles. Here's a quick time lapse of the pieces building on the vest. This is the end of the time lapse. I don't think it's possible to actually take it off the skeleton and wear it myself. It didn't matter how gentle I was or how hard I tried, every time I'd connect one piece, two others would pop out. <laughs> I could not get the tubes to stay on my body without falling apart. I'm going to need to make some major changes for this to work. Version 1 is a disaster. I wouldn't feel safe putting the hamster in here uh, if, if I had one. You see, I can't, I, I can't find a hamster. Nobody wants to let me borrow their hamster. But I did find a rat living in my car's engine. Ugh, rats. Oh, no. If I catch the rat, I could keep it for a few days to test the hamster vest. Oh my god, somebody glued two Tic Tacs to his butt. Good news is, I'm somewhat of an inventor myself. And my friend Kevin is somewhat of an animal trapping expert. Hey Kevin, do you have... Oh, 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 oh my Sorry. goodness. Do you, uh, have, can I borrow one of your bear traps? Yeah. 
So I've got this one, I've got this one, uh, I've got the chomper, uh, I got this one. Oh, this here's here's the gopher grabber. Uh, this this is the gopher stabber. To catch the rat, first I'll make a vacuum capture chamber. It needs two perfect holes in the lid, so I taped a pipe coupler to one side, then drilled out a large pilot hole. The pipe coupler will act as a guide for my flush trim bit. I added a layer of masking tape around the bearing so the cut hole is slightly smaller. Remember that power tools are dangerous, so it's important to wear eye and ear protection. and it didn't work. The pipe coupler moved. So I tried again with more tape. Perfect. Now we want to start off this new rat relationship with kindness and compassion. So I'm going to pad the bottom of the chamber with new merch from catwarehouse.com. This is the time for work hoodie. He is very handsome and the hoodie is very nice. Plus every order comes with a free anti-drug pencil. Logo up, that way you guys can see the product and buy lots of them. Here's how the trap works. When the rat climbs onto the engine, a vacuum cleaner will turn on and suck the rat into a hose, around a loop-de-loop, -loop, and into a bucket. To trigger the vacuum, I used Kevin's smallest bear trap and two bent paper clips with an insulating shim shoved between them. When the bear trap is triggered, it rips the shims and the paper clips touch, completing the circuit. <laughs> Now that I've spent the entirety of my afternoon building this non-lethal rat trap, it's time to close the hood and wait. I'll know that I've caught a rat when I hear the vacuum turn on. But after 12 hours, it never did. And after reviewing the footage, the rat definitely goes in the tube, but the trap didn't trigger. But it doesn't matter, because I've found somebody willing to let me borrow their hamster. A 12 year old child. Hey, thanks for letting me borrow your hamster. Uh -huh. Um, do you, do you have like a, do you have a box? Or do you just want me to take it? Uh, no, I don't have a box. She didn't have a box. This is why I never throw anything away. I don't have a problem, I have a solution. This takeout box I found in the back footwell of my car. A couple air holes and one ice cream later, we were on our way home. Now for anyone worried that she was in the takeout box, it was just a joke. I was actually carrying her in this sock the whole time. Meet Frog, the hamster I borrowed to test the vest. That's right, the hamster's name is Frog. You're a cutie patootie. Oh, your eyes are so bulged out. How funny would it be if I ordered another thousand dollars worth of hamster tubes and sent them to her house? I've already done it. But first, let's improve the vest using this vacuum hose. It's flexible, which is good for me, but also airtight, which is bad for the hamster. I'm going to mix it with the tubes from earlier so there's still air holes. I just guessed the length for the first shoulder strap and measured it so I can cut the second one exactly the same. But I can't remember if I used short 16 inches or long 16 inches. I think it was long 16 inches. This kept going for quite a while. First I snip, then I cut, then I tighten and my fingers started to hurt. But I have an idea to make tightening these pipe clamps easier. All I need is two nails and a drill, but I'm all out of nails. I think there might be some in my car. Tire. Because earlier today, I ran over a construction worker. Tighten the nails in the chuck of a drill, and now I can tighten pipe clamps without hurting my fingers. Eh? 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 Oh? Oh? Uh huh. What do you think? Sort of. Doesn't really stay on. I had a tail too. All right, frog, go in. You don't want to go in? What? <laughs> gonna sort of stick you in there and close the door. This is like a kindergartner on their first day of school. Okay. Frog is in the first 90 degree tube. She's moving along. Okay. Okay. She's just doing circles on the first layer, which is common in animals infected with rabies, but Google says frog can't get rabies. Coming up, going to the second tube. Oh yeah, okay, this is a huge win. This is a huge win. But soon she was zooming around the vest. 
She loves it. Perhaps too much. It took me 20 minutes to get the hamster out. Come on out, Frog. No, William, she wants to stay. She's staying in. William, She's going deeper in the grab system. Her. Okay, that was awesome. Uh, a massive success with the hamster vest. You know, I thought this was going to be stupid, but I think I might be the idiot. That was really, uh, I felt powerful. Okay, let's see what $1,000 worth of hamster tubes looks like. This portion of the video is sponsored by Google Meet. Did you get the hamster tubes? Yeah, a lot of hamster tubes in my house. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot of hamster tubes. I get to cover our whole house with them. I use Google Meet all the time, long before they asked to sponsor a video. What are you going to build? I'm probably going to have something like going onto my couch. Meet is where we have all our video calls for planning open sauce, but I've also started using it for casual video calls since it works on most devices and web browsers. I threw the hallway all over my kitchen into the drawers. Uh, and like my pots and pamsters, I would go, like, go through them. It comes pre-installed on Android devices and is easy to download on iOS from the App Store. And then back into my dad's office, all over his computers, for work, also in my dad's room on his bed. Right, right. Talk to up to 100 people at the same time, share your screen, schedule calls with Google Calendar, integrate with other Google products. And then if I have more, then I could even have it going into my backyard. Do you think you could make it go in the swimming pool? Yeah. It's a ton of useful features that help solve many problems. Like the other day I was talking to my grandma. Hey grandma. Uh, you're pointing the camera the wrong way. There's a little, a little button with the arrows. To point it at your face. Grandma. <laughs> but I was able to end the call 20 minutes early by uploading a custom picture as a background with two presses. I'm about to go through a tunnel right now. And making hissing noises with my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, the signal's cutting out. <laughs> Google Meet is the perfect way to connect with your family and friends no matter what devices they're using. If I still have more tubes, then I'll put it in my parents' bathroom all in their fancy shower. Try Google Meet today. All right, good luck. Okay, bye. Thank you, Google Meet, for sponsoring that portion of the video. There were a couple issues with the second prototype, so I didn't fix any of that. Instead, I added a hat and took Frog to the park. I showed her all the things I normally do at the park, like drinking water out of the drinking fountain. Digging in the trash for cans. Leave a comment, I'll mail it to you. And smiling at the squirrels, hoping that they'll let me pet them. I'd call this my greatest invention ever if I hadn't just stolen the idea from Mr. Bryce Belisle. I actually feel kind of bad for the guy. Looking at his six other patents, he's just a failed inventor who people have been memeing on for decades. Nobody cares about him nor his other inventions, like pocket urinal. It's just a pile of paper representing an old man's best ideas that nobody wanted. But I want to tell him that I actually think the hamster vest is pretty cool. But after spending the past few days trying to find a way to contact him, none of the phone numbers or emails I found work. And I'm pretty sure he's nearly 90 years old if he's even still alive. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. If you feel you've received this message in error, please hang up and try your call again. Even the patent agent's info is bad because they've all retired or are dead at this point. So, to honor Bryce Belial, the inventor of the hamster vest, I stayed up all night building something unique, a tribute to the hamster vest that I think I can I can call my own. I did something other than plagiarize. Get that sad music out of here. First, I cut two sections of this clear tube, which I originally bought for the hamster vest, but it did not pass the egg test. Then made two large holes in the lid of a watertight food container by drilling lots of little holes and then snipping the bridges and then eating it. I'm going to use these large quick connectors I found so the vest stays watertight but opens easily. And I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look watertight at all. 
and you'd be correct. These food tubs aren't meant to hold a lot of pressure, so I 3D printed these little clips that snap onto the lid. Now the clever viewers like you have probably already realized I'm building an aquarium version of the vest. And it's critical it doesn't pop open when there's fish inside, because that would be super embarrassing. Then I printed a bunch of rings to stop the tubes from kinking and connected everything up. The vest is sort of big, but I can't get the bends much tighter without water leaking out from the clear tub. Actually, it leaks no matter what I do, partly because none of my wrenches will fit this nut. It's too cheap to buy a bigger wrench. So I 3D printed a custom one. It mostly doesn't leak now. If I wipe down, you can see there's some drip. You can see things were going well by how dry the floor is. Things were no longer going well because the floor is wet. I feel like the seal's getting worse. All right, things are going are going great. They're going great. It's, they're, everything's great. You see that? You see the power outlet right there? Soaking wet. Oh my God, it weighs so much. Jeez, this thing's, it's got, it weighs like 40 pounds. And it really hurts my shoulders. Huh? Ha, uh, ta-da, <laughs> ta-da. Okay, so I think there's like three gallons of water in here. I've got eight goldfish in it. I peed myself in excitement. That's 0 0.375 gallons of water per fish. Even though the water is completely sealed, they'll be fine for a few hours, but I won't last that long. This thing is extremely uncomfortable. I would say overall, I, I, this is really, really uncomfortable. It's dripping. Now I've never really understood if fish are smart, I know they're bad at math. I tested that last night. Oh, I broke my pencil. But are they capable of enjoying the fish vest? They just look like little robots doing the same thing over and over, which is completely different from me. If I took them out of the vest, would they miss it? If anyone watching is a fish expert, let me know if they're enjoying themselves. If they aren't, don't tell me. Let's put the fish back into their home and take Frog back to hers. Originally, I was going to give Frog's owner a thousand dollar scholarship for when she goes to college, but after seeing what she and her brothers built with the hamster tubes, I just felt bad and gave them cash. Here's a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, a thousand dollars. You can actually keep that. Oh, actually? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> and free tickets to Open Sauce 2024, which you can buy right now before the price goes up once we announce the date and location, which may or may not be near San Francisco again, and may or may not be in June. I know some of you have complained about being too broke to travel across the country for an event that I literally poured my life and soul and money into so people could show off their crazy inventions and meet their favorite creators. So I'll give somebody a free ticket and pay for their hotel and travel if you follow Open Sauce on Instagram plus like and comment on this post. We'll choose somebody in the next couple weeks.